In this video, we're gonna make grid square floors and plugs. So grid square floors for the first time allow you to make a seamless floor for your Torino setups. Now the grid square plugs are gonna look pretty familiar. They're gonna look like one grid square from a, a regular grid tile, plus a little connector on the bottom. And the other one just looks like a strip of foam with masking tape on it. Those are gonna be used to connect boards together under behind the scenes underneath the floors. So let's get started. We're first going to make this tool, a modular grid square plugs builder. It allows you to build five grid square plugs at a time. So you slide in a strip of foam board into it, that is the width of your grid squares, and then you attach uh, cross connectors to it to make the grid square plugs. I know it looks a little complicated, but we're going to go through it step by step, and we're going to start off with just printing out the template from the accompanying tools and templates file. Then you're going to glue that onto a piece of cardboard and then glue both those items onto a piece of foam board. Yeah, that's kind of a new one, right? So we're going to do not just gluing on foam board or cardboard, but both. And you'll also notice that there are two of them here. Um, I like to have two of them on hand because then while one set of grid square plugs are drying, I can work on another set. And uh, once you have the template printed onto the cardboard and foam, just cut it out like you would for any other template. And you'll end up with this cardboard, foam, and template uh, piece. Now you're going to use your grid scoring sled to cut a strip of foam board that is a grid square's width. And we're going to use that to build the rest of the tool. So you're gonna lay it on just like this and then tape it down with some masking tape. And then we're gonna cut a couple of strips of foam board and these are a half inch wide. And this is gonna make the back fence part of this tool. And then just stack the two half inch strips together. And then glue them together. You want to take the straightest edge of the two and you want to put that against your foam board strip right there. And you can see that foam board strip is right up against the black line on the template and that's exactly how we want it. And we just glue on that half inch strip stack. And now we can remove our grid square strip to finish off the template. And that's just a matter of adding a little piece of our grid square strip to the end on the left and right. You can do that on both sides, right up against that black line. And then last but not least, we're going to add a little piece on the end there to hold that grid square strip in place while we're making the grid square plugs. And that's just a matter of taking that half inch strip, gluing it on, and then cutting off the excess. Now I'm only showing you here that I'm making one of these two, but uh, feel free to make another one. It does actually speed up your building of grid square plugs considerably. There you go. One modular grid square plugs builder. I know that really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? So then it's time to make some grid square plugs. So uh, using your grid square scoring sled, you're going to cut out some strips of pre-textured foam and put them into the uh, builder. 
cut off the excess. And then it's time to make some cross connectors. These are regular little cross connectors right out of the basics manual. So go ahead and grab your cross connector template from the basics manual and make five cross connectors. The great thing about the plugs that are used to connect together modular grid components is that they're basically just wall cross connectors. So you already know how to make them. So now here you want to make sure you don't put glue all the way to the end of the cross connectors. You kind of want to put them in the center um, and that's so it doesn't flow out past the plug itself and cause problems. So what I usually do is I cross the glue from one indent to the other indent on the opposite side and then that kind of also glues the different pieces of the cross connector together and glues the cross connector to the grid square strip. And just position it using the builder. I'm going to do that for the other four. Now notice again here, I'm gluing from one corner to the other corner. One corner to the other corner. This has the benefit of, of having the glue stay in the center so it doesn't get in the way. And also gluing the separate bits of that cross connector together. Great. So now I'll let that sit and get totally dry and then remove it from the builder. Add another grid square wide strip of textured foam. And then add glue to the five connectors, just like you did before, corner to corner. and insert all those connectors into the builder. So now you'll notice here, just from five connectors, you actually make 10 grid square plugs, which is pretty good. And now we're gonna keep them together as this assembly uh, while we paint them. It makes it easier to hold them and handle them, and then we'll cut them apart after they've been painted and dried. And we're gonna be painting these in strong coat. And that's because we're gonna be plugging in and unplugging these from grid square bases fairly often. And we want them to be durable enough to take that stress. Uh, you also definitely want to look in the modular floor tiles manual uh, for tips on best practices on how to plug in and unplug grid square plugs and floor plugs. Once these are dry, we're gonna cut them out using a depth cutter. Uh, you might be familiar with this tool if you've made crenellations in the Castles and Catacombs manual. But if not, we'll go over making one here. In this case, we're gonna make a four sheet thick depth cutter. That means we're gonna take strips of foam board, four strips. We're gonna take that four strip pile, tape it together. So what this tool will do will ensure that the plugs on the grid square plugs, the actual cross connector part of the grid square plugs, are the correct depth and it makes it really easy to cut them out that way. So once we have this bundle with masking tape on it, we're going to add a utility knife blade onto the top of it. Now you'll notice we'll put the blade down first and put hot glue on top of the blade. We do that so we make sure that the blade is laying right up against that foam. So here you can see it's going to cut the depth of those grid square plugs perfectly. You just lay your grid square plug stack on your work surface and the depth cutter right next to it and then gently slide it across the cross connector part of the grid square plugs. And this ensures that they're going to be the perfect depth to sit just right in our grid square bases. There you go. 
Now, if you want some added durability, you can add some uh, tight bond wood glue to the ends of those plugs there, but you may not need them. And here we're just doing the other side. Now, please be careful with your hands when you do this. Lay them flat on top of the cross connectors you're cutting. Make sure you, none of your fingers hang down below uh, the tops of the cross connectors. There we go. So now we've cut all the plugs on the grid square plugs. And now it's time to cut out the individual grid square plugs. And we're going to use this tool that's in the accompanying tools and templates file. And I just made this like any other template. I, you know, it's just the printout on top of some cardboard. Then we're going to gently score the grid square plugs through the scoring slits. And then we just snap them apart. And uh, after this is done, you'll just touch up those edges that are exposed there with uh, some more gray strong coat. There you go. So you can see it's pretty fast to make these. Now keep in mind, just like in every other terreno piece, uh, there is human error that's going to be introduced. So you will have some of these grid square plugs that no matter whether you, you put them in right side up or left to right, try to turn them, they're just not going to work very well. That's just the unfortunate reality. But most of them I can usually get away with using in certain situations. Like I won't use them on the edge where there's a wall because maybe they're they're just a little too narrow, but I can use them in the middle of the floor where they'll look just fine. So you can see here's a whole slew of grid square plugs that I have on one of my modular grid tile assemblies. And you can see none of them are perfect, but all of them are good enough. And that's basically the best you can expect from grid square plugs. So keep that in mind. So next up, we're gonna make a floor plug. Now this floor plug is gonna be four squares by four squares. So here you can see I'm sort of roughing out a four by four piece of textured foam board. You wanna have it a little wider than you need so we can trim it down later. And you'll notice here too, with, with floor plugs, there's only two cross connectors connected to them. One in the top right and one in the bottom left. And that's because if you put more cross connectors on a floor plug like this, it would be near impossible to plug it in and unplug it. So just use the template to position those two cross connectors. And then remove the template. And it's ready for paint. And again, we're going to put strong coat on these because we want to make sure these are pretty durable. and just set that aside to completely dry. And then we're gonna use that depth cutter we made for the grid square plugs, the four sheet depth cutter, to cut out these cross connectors too. Now you'll notice you may have to finish them off with your utility knife because that blade won't reach the innermost part of the cross connector, but that's pretty easy to do. And just do the same for the other cross connector. And then it's time to trim it down so it's the correct width. So we're gonna put that grid square cutter template back on to cut off the outside edge. And you'll see there's scoring slits all around this for you to mark the edge of the floor tile. So just mark that through the scoring slits. And then remove the template. and then carefully cut off the edges with your metal ruler and your utility knife. Now you'll notice I put a piece of cardboard underneath and I'm propping up the ruler with a piece of foam. This sort of clamps the piece in place while I'm cutting it, making it really easy to cut them off. And that's it. So here you see it actually fits up perfectly with grid bases. It's like that, good to go. And then we're gonna paint those edges to finish them off with strong coat. Then it's time to make some hidden plugs. These are really easy to make. They're just a three sheet wide strip of foam board like I'm cutting out here, that's wrapped top and bottom with masking tape and then they're cut down to be approximately one inch long and I'll show you how to do that. So you're going to wrap the bottom. Making sure that master tape's on there well. 
Then you're going to wrap the top. And wrap that around. Yeah, so this thing is now entirely covered in masking tape, and most of it's covered in two layers of masking tape, which makes these nice and durable. So we want to make them roughly an inch long, yeah, but it's it's not it doesn't have to be perfect, which means you can kind of eyeball them, meaning that you can cut you know dozens of these in seconds, and they're pretty tolerant of you being a little off. You know, maybe maybe some are seven eighths of an inch, maybe some are an inch and a quarter. It's it's okay. And if you find one that's a little too long, you just trim off some later on. And that's it for modular grip plugs. So if you haven't already, you can get started right now on your Torino journey by downloading the Torino construction manuals at GameGearMaster.com. They are consistently rated five stars and come with a 14 day hassle free money back guarantee. That means if Torino's not for you, no problem. You'll get your money back. No questions asked. Happy crafting.